Moments away from the opening kick. Let's check in with Jenny Dell downstairs. Well, I and these two teams are playing for the Texas Governor's Cup, which dates back to 1967 in the Houston Oilers. Now, the Texans and the Cowboys have only faced each other four times. Texans opening up their franchise back in 2002 with a win over the Cowboys. But these players, they know the importance of this game. This is not just a win, but it's bragging rights in Texas. The owners are friends, and as J.J. Watt said, Texas is football country. They're hoping that they can use the pride and environment in this stadium right here to their advantage. Ryan? All right, Jenny, we're underway. Houston has won the toss and will receive with Danielle Manning taking a knee off the kick from Bailey. Texans will have it at the 20-yard line to open things up here at AT&T Stadium. Ryan Fitzpatrick, no interceptions in the first two games. He has thrown five in the last two. The Texans are three and one. And, I, and when I asked him yesterday who stood out on the Dallas defense, he hesitated before saying nobody really. And that is a compliment because the Cowboy defense plays so well together. The key, of course, will be getting the Texan running game going today with a now healthy Arian Foster. Only 37 rushing yards last week on 23 carries, a 23-17 win over Buffalo. First and 10 from the 20, Foster is in there. And a flag to open things up. We'll hear from Pete Morelli, our referee, early. False start, number 87 offense, five-yard penalty. Remains first down. C.J. Fedorowicz, the rookie tight end for Bill O'Brien. Call on the penalty, so back it up on first down on the first play from scrimmage. It's a little tiny flinch by the rookie, but uh, yeah, yeah. big mistake on first down. 52% of their plays have been running plays. That's number two in the NFL behind Cincinnati. He leads it at 54%. Foster, no gain on the play. Brandon Carr, first man there. Let's take a look at the starting offense for Houston. Chris Myers, his 101st consecutive start as a Texan, 117th overall, one of the leaders on the team. And Andre Johnson, a little bit of a question mark this week because of an ankle injury, but Johnson is in there for the full complement of weapons for Ryan Fitzpatrick. Second and 15, spread it out for Fitzpatrick. Underneath, he gets Hopkins involved for a modest game. Four and a half yards on the play. Justin Durant over there defensively. Defensively for Dallas. Henry Melton, he is not 100%. Melton's been dealing with a hamstring issue. Linebackers, Anthony Hitchens will get an opportunity because of the injury to Bruce Carter. Carter sitting this one out with a thigh injury. And in the secondary, Brandon Carr. Signed as a free agent in 2012. Given big money, five years, $50 million deal when it came over from Kansas City. Third and ten for the Texans. Look out. Fitzpatrick throws the ball as he was going down. J.J. Wilcox putting the pressure on Ryan Fitzpatrick, and the Texans go three and out. Well, Wilcox is on a nickel blitz here, and it's a J.J., not Watt, but Wilcox, who goes all the way around the corner and will bring down Pet Fitzpatrick. Good job by Fitzpatrick getting rid of this ball at the last instant, but that penalty on first down on Fedorowicz really cost the Texans dearly. Bill O'Brien said that Shane Leckler, the punter, has been a huge weapon for the team. He's one of the leaders of the Texans. Deep punt handled by Harris, the return man. Harris looking to get to the outside. Spin move by Harris. And gang tackled as he crossed the 35. 18-yard return, a 61-yard punt. Jeff Tarpinian makes the play on special teams. And Tony Romo, last week against New Orleans in that 38 to 17 win, threw for three touchdowns. Penalty on that return, it's gonna work against Dallas. So back it up, there's gonna be solid field position to open up for the Cowboys offense. I asked Tony Romo yesterday about what's the big challenge for the Cowboys today, and without hesitation, he said blocking the Texans' pass rush led by J.J. Watt. The Romo's confident in his O-line and the game plan that uh, will feature the now normal league-leading rushing attack. Everything is working in unison right now for Dallas on offense. That one game and pass game synchronized, and they're executing at a high level. How do they handle J.J. Watt? Double tight end set to open up with Witten and Hannah, and they back it up. 
just shy of the 10 yard line. Jason Garrett looking for an explanation. Romo on a give. Murray, early contact, and that first wave led by J.J. Watt for no gain on the play. Offensively for Dallas, Tyron Smith. He was taken two picks ahead of J.J. Watt in the 2011 draft, and he is a star on the left side of the line. Another star, Des Bryant, came out of that 2010 draft, the number 24 pick and one of the premier wide receivers in football. Second and 10 for the Cowboys. Romo out of the gun. Offensive line holds up. Juggle and a drop by Bryant. It is ruled incomplete. Yeah, good, good call by the officials. About three of them saw the juggle and then the hit that uh, confirmed that this ball is going to be incomplete. It's going to be a good bat battle to watch all day long. Des Bryant are going against another J.J., Jonathan Joseph. Got They're a lot of over. J.J.'s here. All, well, Jerry Jones, this is his world, right? Dino Might. <laughs> J.J. Walker. Look at Jimmy Walker a mention early. Third down conversions this season. Houston's defense ranked number one. The Dallas offense ranked number two. Devin Street now on the field. For Dallas on a third and ten. Split formation. Romo out of the pocket. Trying to dump it off. Incomplete. Murray the intended target. And both teams go three and out on their first possessions. Yeah, a little jitters here for both clubs. We had the offsides on Fedorowicz on first down. And then a pair of drop passes now. That uh, screen pass had a chance to get some good yardage. As the Cowboy offensive line was out in front of Murray. But he couldn't pull it in. Keyshawn Martin is the return man. Chris Jones will punt it. Division II product out of Carson Newman. Houston should have excellent field position. Martin, fair catch. And it's brought in just across the 40-yard line after the 49-yard punt. Fitzpatrick and the Texans offense back on the field trying to get something going. When we return... Back in Arlington, no score. The Texans and the Cowboys, the first two weeks of the season, Arian Foster went over 100 yards rushing. Since that point, because of the injury, Houston has asked Ryan Fitzpatrick to do more in weeks three and four. First and 10, just short of the 41. Fitzpatrick throwing. He connects with Ryan Griffin. Forward progress out near midfield. It's an eight-yard pickup. Now you can see the uh, between the difference between weeks one and two and three and four for Fitzpatrick, but uh, you, you mentioned the fact that Foster was out for weeks three and played barely in week four, so obviously that's a big problem for this uh, Texan offense. He is completing 65% of his passes so far this season. That would be a career best for Fitzpatrick, who's now in his 10th year in the league. Second and two, five receivers set. Rush coming, Fitzpatrick, double punt, incomplete. Looking for Johnson over the middle, and Rolando McLean, the former Raider, putting the heat on Fitzpatrick. Well, the McLean coming up the middle here. He's a big linebacker, almost 265 pounds at 6'4". But how about the job Jeremy Mincy did, dropping off from his defensive end spot to take Andre Johnson over the middle. That's a mismatch the Texans might want to revisit at some point. Third and two. We're still waiting for the first first down of this opening quarter. Fitzpatrick fires. Tight window. He's got Johnson for a first down. 11 yards into Dallas territory in a matchup with Carr. 950 catches now for Andre Johnson in his career. This is what Fitzpatrick does extremely well. Throw the inside slant routes. And really, you got to give it to Brandon Carr. He couldn't be any closer to knocking that ball away. But the big body of Andre Johnson kept him away from the ball. So new set of downs for Houston to work with at the 40 of Dallas. Once again out of the gun, Fitzpatrick. Out route, intercepted, picked off by Skandrick. Out of bounds along the sideline. 
but Houston turns it over early. Yeah, miscommunication with the quarterback Fitzpatrick and Arian Foster on the outside. Foster's going to go right down the field. Look at Skandrick playing zone, reading the quarterback's eyes, breaks on the ball, and it's a huge turnover for the Cowboys here in the first quarter. Aerial coverage of today's game is provided by MetLife. Fantastic shots at AT&T Stadium as we welcome you back inside. Dallas and Houston no score. The Texans turn it over on an interception by Skandrick. Here's Murray cutting it to the outside for five. Let's go back to the interception. Here's Skandrick and here's Arian Foster. Skandrick has no help deep. So he's really taking a gamble here. If this is read properly, that's a walk-in touchdown for Foster. But obviously the maybe lack of practice time between the two because of the hamstring problems with Foster may have led to that interception, but uh, that's a at least a seven-point play made by Skandrick. That could have been a touchdown for Skandrick if he stays in bounds. Or make it a 14-point play then. Like my math, I'm just adding numbers to this <laughs> equation. No score between Houston and Dallas. Houston, the only team that has not given up points in a first quarter this season. Romo on the out route to Beasley. Out of bounds for four. Jonathan Joseph over there defensively for Houston. They picked up the veteran Ryan Pickett. J.J. Watt telling us he's fit in perfectly with this defense. Linebackers, Brian Cushing leads the team in tackles back from another major knee surgery. And in the secondary, Jonathan Joseph once again playing at a very high level. They signed him to the big contract in 2011. He's been worth every penny. Murray and Klutz in the backfield on a third and one. Murray bulldozing for a first down. Needed a yard. Ends up getting five with that strong effort knifing through the line. Well, it's a combination of uh, determination, but also smarts. He was stuffed at the line of scrimmage trying to get in behind Klutz, but kept his legs going, bounced to the right side, and found just enough to pick up the first down. He's on pace for a big year yardage-wise. He's also on pace for a lot of carries, 396, which would be a franchise record. Give it to Murray again. Murray trying to veer to the outside. Pick it there to greet him. NFL Today update. Let's head to New York. J.B. and Boomer. Boomer beginning to be an Eagles habit. They're at it again this week. Here comes James Casey. He's going to block the pump of Johnny Hecker. And Chris Maragos is going to pick it up, a 10-yard touchdown return for the Eagles. Two weeks in a row, the way they start the game, tremendous on special teams. Ian, Dan, and Jenny. Yeah, they set the tone against San Francisco, but couldn't finish the deal last week, suffering their first loss against the 49ers. Play action. Romo looking for an adjustment, coming back for the football. He's got his man, Harris. Kareem Jackson, the defender there, 18 yards, and Tony Romo. This is just a great job after the play fake, telling his receiver what he wants him to do. The coverage by Kareem Jackson was really good. If Romo throws the deep ball, it's probably going to be incomplete, but he waves him back towards the line of scrimmage and throws him a perfect pass. Great communication on the fly. And improvisation from Romo. He's always had that talent, hasn't he? First and ten inside the 35 of Houston. They approach the eight-minute mark of this first quarter. Here's Murray. Juke move by Murray. Carries inside the 30 for five. Good block from Zach Martin, one of those young offensive linemen for Dallas. And this was a conscious effort, Dan, by this organization to really address the O-line, and they felt that that would be the foundation, there would be a trickle-down effect. It's working. Well, it's working, and it may extend Tony Romo's career another five years because he's playing behind a line that is young and talented. Three first-round draft picks in the last four years for Jerry Jones and the Cowboys. They're the fourth youngest team overall in the NFL behind St. Louis, Jacksonville, and Kansas City. They're even younger on that O-line. And they're going off, on, off, off balance here on the left side. Play action. Second and five. Look out. Brian Cushing gets to the quarterback. Romo takes the sack. Loss of eight on the play. 
Now Cushing is going to defeat the block of DeMarco Murray. Watch 56 coming in here. He just sheds Murray and gets after Romo. Romo quickly on the ground to save any damage. First sack of the season for Brian Cushing. And Romeo Cornell's defense. Cornell didn't coach last season. Five Super Bowl rings in his career between the Giants and New England as an assistant. Eighth play of the drive. Dallas now facing a third and 13. Dime package here for Houston. Swearinger trying to make sure everybody's on the same page defensively. Rush again. Romo gets rid of it. He's got Bryant for a first down. Perfectly thrown ball by Romo. Yeah, and his pocket awareness was spot on. The blitz was coming, an unblocked player here. It's Swearinger, and then around the outside he comes, but Romo steps up just about two yards into the pocket and will complete this 15-yarder to Bryant. How about that route, too, beating Jonathan Joseph to the outside, but that one was on Romo. And the former quarterback, Jason Garrett, can appreciate that pocket awareness. Now in his fourth full year as the head coach of the Cowboys became the interim head coach back in 2010. Ninth play of the drive. Fake the inside handoff. They give it to Harris. Picks up four yards. Chopped down by Andre Howell, the rookie out of Vanderbilt for Houston. And you know, that's one of those plays that will take some of the load off of DeMarco Murray. A first down, little quick screen out to a wide receiver. Picks up four yards. Romo, a perfect four for four on this drive. In the red zone, Dallas, 14 possessions, nine touchdowns, four field goals. Houston a little thin in the secondary. No A.J. Boyes out with a groin injury, and no Daryl Morris out with an ankle injury. Second and six for the Cowboys. Trying to get on the board. Murray sheds one tackle, weaves his way through traffic, finally brought down. A whiff from Crick initially, and then Murray turns it into a five-yard game. Watt was not in on that play for Houston. You gotta wonder why not. I mean, he has battled a th thigh injury this week, and uh, he's back in the game now after Crick got good penetration but couldn't bring down Murray. AFC Defensive Player of the Month for J.J. Watt. Had nine hits on the quarterback last week against Buffalo. Third and one. Murray. A first down. Oh, he loses the ball. Murray coughs it up. Recovered by Tuggle. The second effort by Murray. And that's the one issue that Jason Garrett pointed out in regards to Murray. He said he has improved in every facet of the game except taking care of the ball. And you wonder if his forward progress had been stopped. But you're right about the fumbling issue. That's four that he's fumbled this year, and he's lost all four. 11 plays for Dallas. No points. DeMarco Murray, fourth lost fumble of the season for Murray. And Houston gets it back with a first and 10 from the 14. Trying to establish Arian Foster, and he picks up two yards going up the gun. Murray yep. lost those three fumbles entering today, Dan, as you mentioned, all of them coming in the first quarter of games. And now he leads the NFL with the most lost fumbles this season. It's pretty puzzling, too, to Jason Garrett. He says that it's in the way he holds the ball at times. He's got big hands, and he relies on his strong hands, but when there's traffic around there, it gets popped out. And Jason telling him, hey, why have people talk about it? Just quit fumbling. Quick hitter to Hopkins. He is spun out of bounds by Carr as McLean put a shot on Fitzpatrick when he released the football. It's a seven-yard game. We're down to 340 to play in this first quarter. Hey, we're getting a look at what Rob Marinelli wants to do as defensive coordinator. He wants to, this big guy coming at the quarterback. That's a free shot and a real good legal shot by Rolando McLean. Did not hit uh, Fitzpatrick in the head, did not use his helmet, used his shoulder, and drilled Fitzpatrick. Dallas comes in, tied for first place in the NFC East. Houston, the leaders in the AFC South. It's a toss for Foster. Very close, and it is enough. Good spot to the 25. They'll move the chains. Anthony Hitchens got him down low. Well, Hitchens is taking the place of Bruce Carter. 
who's out with a quad injury. This is a great effort by Hitchens because uh, Foster has some room if he can get by number 59. Just enough to grab that pink shoe and bring him down. Breast Cancer Awareness Month. So you see the gear that the players are wearing, cleats and gloves and wristbands. They gave out pink rally towels for the fans here. Big hole, Foster. It just opened up for the three-time Pro Bowler to the tune of 14 yards. Let's go to the NFL Today update in New York. J.B. and Boomer. Dan Fouts will appreciate capping a long drive. Well, Eli Manning picking up where he last left off, and that was against the Washington Redskins a couple Thursday nights ago. His 10th touchdown pass of the season, that time to Reuben Randall. 7-0 in Giants. Ian Eagle. They're speeding up the pace here, J.B., going no huddle. Give it to Foster. Matt Foster takes a wallop from Barry Church, the safety. Three-yard pickup as he picked him up and tossed him down. And one of the things that uh, Bill O'Brien told us yesterday was that in the running game, the tight ends have to do a better job. And that time, Garrett Graham on that side of the line be next to Dwayne Brown did a good job for Murray, especially on the previous play when he got that big game. Last week, Fitzpatrick got a win against his former team, the Buffalo Bills. He told us it was really emotional for him. It meant a lot to him. Had that fiery pregame speech that came from the heart. Second and seven. Fitzpatrick running with it. Flag is thrown back at the 37-yard line. That's going to be holding. No question about it. Derek Newton slow to get up for Houston. Holding. Number 60 offense, 10-yard penalty remains, second down. And it's Ben Jones, third-year guard out of Georgia, that's called on the hole. Tyrone Crawford got inside of Ben Jones there with a real good, powerful move, and then Jones could just reach out and call him down. Fitzpatrick doing a good job of moving in the pocket, but that was an easy call. Houston's averaging just under 22 points per game, 340 yards per game. Both ranked 22nd overall in those two categories. Alfred Blue is now in. He's the rookie out of LSU. Fitzpatrick playing. The ball was tipped, so it never got to Demaris Johnson cleanly. We're down to 50 seconds to play in this opening quarter. That's another big play by Orlando Skandrick. He had an interception on the uh, previous series of plays this time. He gets up in the air and tips that ball, prevents a completion, and brings up a third down and long. A nightmare type of situation for Fitzpatrick. Very creative blitzes by Rob Marinelli so far in this first quarter. Cowboys lost cornerback Morris Claiborne, torn patellar tendon, left knee. He's done for the year. That was last week in the win over New Orleans. Shotgun, third and 17. Aaron Foster. Gets to the outside, but not enough for a first down. Houston will punt it. We talked about the blocking of the tight end, Graham, and Dwayne Brown. Let's check him out on this play. Big hole to begin with on that side. Look at that job by Brown and Graham. And this play does not pick up the first down, but it gives the Texans a chance to really pin the Cowboys deep, especially with the talent of Shane Leckler. Leckler to Harris. Harris ranges over, makes his move upfield. Flag is thrown as Harris is brought down short of the 30-yard line. Penalty marker back at the 15. The snapper John Weeks in on the stop. And C.J. Spillman with the hold. So a couple of penalties on a special teams play. It's made it difficult for the Cowboys to get out of their own end of the field. Happy Morelli is checking on the specifics with 22 seconds to go in this first quarter. Now the Cowboys are backing up all the way to their own end zone now. We saw the field judge, Buddy Horton, with his hat off. That means one of the gunners stepped out of bounds. There are two fouls on the play of the receiving team. The illegal block in the back. Number 37, that penalty is declined. Holding, number 59 of the receiving team. That penalty is accepted, 10 yards. First down, 
timeout. So that one against Anthony Hitchens. Cowboys once again deep in their own territory. No score in the Battle of Texas. NFL on CBS from Arlington, Dallas. First two possessions, a punt, a long drive, and a fumble by Murray. Trying to get Bryant out in space, and he's met immediately by Kareem Jackson, limited to a gain of two. And Jackson now coming off after making the stop. Andre Howell will replace him. And they're hurting in the defensive backfield. A.J. Bowie is out, Daryl Morris out, Eddie Pleasant out, and now Jackson on the sideline. Texans have still not given up any first quarter points this season. No score as we go to the second. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Medical staff working with Kareem Jackson injured on that open field tackle on Des Bryant. That was the final play of the first quarter. We start the second. Swing pass that bounces to Terrence Williams. Incomplete. Go back to the injury to Kareem Jackson. Watch his left arm here. Remember, Des Bryant is 220. Jackson about 190. And not only does he get hit, then he comes down on the left elbow as well. And he needs help immediately. Brings up a third and eight now for Dallas. Andre Hal and Albert Mack, the only available corners. They also have Jamal Wool signed from the practice squad. Third and eight. Romo throws. It's complete. Jason Witten. Albert Mack there defensively. It's a nine-yard pickup. Uh, he has now 895 career receptions and another one for a first down. He knew exactly what he needed. Look at the job they're going to do on J.J. Watt here. A nice double team, a pass off there, and uh, Brooks Reed just a little bit slow getting to Romo. Witten has not been as big a factor in the passing game because they've run the ball so effectively. Murray on the spin is brought down. Run around the 23. Let's go to New York. NFL Today update. J.D. and Tober. Falcons answer the Giants. Yeah, that's how you respond to a touchdown. You hand it to your big tailback, Stephen Jackson. He's going to follow his young offensive line into the end zone. Falcons tied up 7-7 on a 10-yard run by Stephen Jackson. And Fouts had a bruising running back like that, did he not? I think he did. Absolutely. Ian, Dan, and Jenny. I think, I think we're talking about Chuck Munson. I think he was about as big and bruising as you could possibly get and was not happy to have him as a team. Six offensive linemen here for Dallas. Play action for Romo. Growing incomplete. Glances off the hands of Murray with Justin Tuggle there. Tight defense from the linebacker. Access all of today's football action on the go. Download the award-winning CBS Sports app right now for instant scores, breaking news, video, and more. All on your phone. Kareem Jackson returns for Houston, so Jackson back on the field. The Texans defense now facing a third and five. Romo is six out of 10 for 52 yards here in the first half. Four receivers set, Romo out of the gun. Protection holds up, Romo, dump off, Murray. First down on the catch and run by Murray. The questions with him have been durability questions. Murray just off to a fantastic start this season. That's 10 yards on the pass play. Well, the protection should be good. There's two guys rushing. Nine dropping, all into zones. And how about the block by Jason Witten, clearing the way for Murray to pick up the first down. Interesting defensive call by Romeo Cornell, rushing just two at Romo. It's a contract year for DeMarco Murray. They did not agree on the deal. And he's backing it up with big numbers. Here's Murray. Veering to the outside. Murray brought down by Tuggle and Lewis. A nine-yard pickup. You know, to watch Murray on that play there, just under control until he saw the crease in the defense. And he stepped on the gas and accelerated for that nine-yard gain. Oh, this has been a storyline this week, though, trying to get Murray some rest and working in some other backs. Joseph Randall, second-year running back out of Oklahoma State, now in there on the second and one, will get the call. Nice 
nice move by Randall to sidestep one tackler and pick up the first out. It's a two-yard game. Yeah, it looked like he was going to be stopped in the backfield as the Texans were coming with a linebacker blitz on that side. Watch the call here this time. Here comes Cushing right through a gap here. But the quickness to jump to the outside and then realizing what he needed for the first down, he picks it up and Watt will get another rest on the sidelines. Maybe that thigh is bothering him more than he lets on. Ninth play of the drive for Dallas. Randall remains in there. And Randall changing directions. Brooks Reed there to greet him. It's a two-yard game. Cowboys are three and one under Jason Garrett for the first time. First time that they're three and one at all since 2008. That's when Wade Phillips was the head coach. They're in a stretch now of playing five of six games here at home. This is the time for Dallas to build some confidence and show that they're better than a 500 team. That's what they've been the last three years. Yeah, but they got to go to Seattle next week. Well, there was that one road game. He was in there. Romo off the spin. Romo, sidearm toss. He gets it to Whitten. So avoiding the sack, loses his helmet on the play, and it turns into a four-yard pickup. Merciless and Watt getting in the face of Romo. Well, he's just a magician at times, looking over the entire field, gets away from Watt there, and then he gets the double shot. Watt just made uh, Smith whiff on his block. How about the pass to just squeeze it under the arm of Merciless? And Jason Witten. And the helmet pops off at the end of the play. Watt was actually fined by the NFL $16,537 for rushing for roughing the passer last week on two occasions against Manuel. A throw from Romo. High throw. Bryant looking for a flag. Jonathan Joseph holds up defensively for Houston. And the punting unit is coming on for Dallas. Well, give this one to Jonathan Joseph. Tremendous job here playing from off coverage, breaking on the ball. Had that right arm wrapped around Bryant. That's what Bryant is complaining about here. But that ball got to those gloves. It should have been caught regardless. And Dan, for Dallas, second 11-play drive. And they still have no points on the board. Jones, the punt. And Sean Martin is buried at the 11th. 41-yard punt and a two-yard return. Tony Romo. He knew this was coming throughout the day. Just trying to keep his equipment on. J.J. Watt has been Mr. Everything for this Houston defense this season, but he hasn't played every snap. Houston gets the football back into the Alfred Blue up the middle for four yards as we check in with Jenny Dell. Well, guys, I can tell you when J.J. Watt came to the sideline, he sat down on the bench and started rubbing his right quad quite a bit. He looked to be in somewhat of some distress and some pain. They just rewrapped his left elbow, and I can say that he's taken oxygen multiple times down here. I will keep an eye on him throughout the game. Well, right now he's checking out some pictures on that tablet along the sideline. NFL is going high tech. Second and six. Blue. Steam rolling for five. And you can see Bill O'Brien's game plan on the ground game. Everybody knows that the uh, Texans run the stretch play about as well as anybody, but what they're doing today is they're going right at the Cowboys with just good old-fashioned lead plays with the fullback leading either Blue or Foster right up the middle. And then they made a change on the offensive line. Xavier Suafilo, the rookie out of UCLA, is now in. Houston, the play selection. It's been a big key throughout the season featuring the run. They're averaging just about five and a half yards per rush. And it is enough for a first down. Ryan Fitzpatrick taking matters into his own hands. It's a two-yard pickup. You know, one of the most underrated plays in football in short yardage is the quarterback sneak. Especially when you have a veteran center like Chris Myers. Did you like it? I loved it. You know, I, you, you'd be surprised <laughs> me. But I scored 13 touchdowns in my NFL career. 13. 13 rushing touchdowns. Yes, sir. And 12 of them were on quarterback sneaks. It was, it was a gimme. Do we have video? Can we, can we bring up any of these quarterback sneaks? I have some black years? and white stills for you. I'll show you. Do we have beta, maybe? <laughs> they didn't even have beta back then. First and 10 for Houston. 
Just short of the 25 yard line. Play fake. Fitzpatrick fires. Incomplete and fortunate. It wasn't picked off by Carr. Andre Johnson, the intended target. This ball is thrown behind Andre Johnson. As you said, Ian, if it uh, is caught by Carr, it may be a touchdown for Dallas, but uh, you can see how Andre Johnson had to stop his route, reach back, and Carr with perfect coverage, but bad hands. So second and 10 now for the Texans. Fitzpatrick is four of nine for 31 yards and a pick. Hopkins, the motion man for Houston. No score. Just under eight minutes to go in the first half. Fitzpatrick, he's got Hopkins. And a flag is thrown. Five-yard pickup. Flag tossed at the 31. Houston had eight penalties for 90 yards last week in that win over Buffalo. And they had an offensive lineman downfield here. As Morelli's going over to Jason Garrett to explain to him the situation. Ineligible man downfield, number 76 of the offense. Five-yard penalty remains, second down. The pro bowler Dwayne Brown, the guilty party. Tomorrow, see why critics are calling the new hit drama Scorpion. Rainy fun. Scorpion, tomorrow at 9, 8 central, after the Big Bang Theory only. CBS. So back it up. Second and 15 now for Bill O'Brien's offense. And here we are halfway through the second quarter. 0-0. Who would have thought this? Dallas put up 38 points last week in a win over New Orleans. They're riding a three-game winning streak. They never actually took the yardage off. And that's what the officials are now... Yeah, they meeting these, about. Yeah, they got these headsets now so that they wouldn't have to have these meetings. Well, sometimes face-to-face -face is the best communication, man. No, apparently it's a, a good deal because they got together and there's the walk-off of five yards. It was at the 22-yard line. Arian Foster on the sideline. They've been going with Alfred Blue, who got the start in week three against the Giants as Foster was inactive. Andre Johnson was in the backfield, now shifts out of there on a second and 15. Fitzpatrick, quick toss. Johnson, hit down low. J.J. Wilcox, physical safety with good quickness, getting over in a hurry. It's a three-yard gain. Pretty good play here by number 27. Watch Wilcox unblocked here, go low and take the knees out. Heads up play by Wilcox. Good recognition on that quick flanker screen. Wilcox was a running back at Georgia Southern his first three years of college and then got switched to safety his senior year. Turned out to be a good switch. Drafted in the third Cowboys. round. I had all the Cowboys right at the first down marker there. He's going to rush three at Fitzpatrick. Flag thrown. And this play never gets off. Delay of game. Offense, five yard penalty, remains third down. I think Fitzpatrick saw that defense and was confused as to what to do. I mean, they were all lined up exactly where he needs to pick up the first down. Saw just three men that were going to rush him on the pass rush. Now it'll be interesting to see. Looks like the Cowboys going to do the exact same thing here. Here's the down marker, and here are all the defenders. Tough to confuse a Harvard guy. Third and 17. Running play going nowhere. Foster hit by Durant. And the Dallas defense has come to play. Well, we're seeing a really good coaching by both Rob Marinelli defensively for the Cowboys and Romeo Cornell. That's why we've got a nothing-nothing game right now. They're just dialing up a creative type of defenses, blitzes, and that time a prevent defense, if you will. Michael on the coming again. Dwayne Harris will get an opportunity here from the 31. Harris loses the football. Houston was there. They were in the right spot. Flag down on the play. Tarpinian knocked it loose. And they're indicating it will be Texans ball. And it is.
Uh, trying to find a, a crease there. Tarpinian with the right hand pulls the right bicep. Watch him just During grab the that return, arm and pull it away from the ball. The Number Second fumble for the Cowboys here. Penalties the fly. Result of the play is the first down, Houston. Timeout. And the rookie Alfred Blue on the recovery. The Texans take over in Dallas territory. Look at a strike first on the board. Good showing here in Dallas from all the Texans fans. What a battle of red in attendance. What's been the biggest difference between last year and this year for Houston? Takeaways. They've only matched last year's total. Fitzpatrick throwing too high. Johnson matched up with Carr. Incomplete with 5.44 to play, second quarter. But that's uh, worth a shot, though. Loosen up a defense, especially after a turnover and positive territory on the field. Obviously the best starting field position for the Texans. Why not go for one? That was perfect coverage by Brandon Carr as he shut out Johnson to the sideline. 85 yards of offense for Houston. Dallas only has 95. A misdirection here to Hopkins and the Cowboys were ready. J.J. Wilcox. Aggressive. Well, he's stealing the limelight from J.J. Watt, isn't he? A couple of outstanding plays on wide receiver screens. That day, he doesn't make this tackle. Hopkins has got a big game. That's as he gets inside the block there of Dwayne Brown. Not an easy thing to do. Rod Marinelli took over for Monty Kiffin. Kiffin remains on. Part of the coaching staff. Third and eight for the Texans. Five minutes to go first half. Fitzpatrick. Incomplete. The Morris Johnson, the former Eagle, unable to secure it. As yeah, ball thrown just a little bit too hard by Fitzpatrick. And even if Johnson makes this catch, it's doubtful he's going to be able to pick up the first down. He was only about four yards beyond the line of scrimmage. And they needed a lot more than that. Great field position for Houston, and they do nothing with it. Leckler the punt. Trying to pick the Cowboys deep once again. Takes a bounce inside the five and rolls into the end zone. 41-yard punt, but a net of 21. We remain scoreless as the Cowboys take over at their own 20. Back inside AT&T Stadium. Roof is closed here in Arlington. On a first and ten for Dallas. No score. Roman throws. In stride, Terrence Williams. Big connection downfield for 28 yards. Swearinger with a stop for Houston. Well, it's a deep crossing route by Williams. And because of the play fake, it allowed... Roma to get back and get away from J.J. Watt as he is flat held on the play. Tackled by Zach Martin, and Martin gets away with it. Cowboys on the move. Romo now 9 of 14 for 94 yards. Williams' his first catch of the day. We'll come up on four minutes to go in the second quarter. Murray, single setback. It's Murray. Tripped up. Seven-yard game for Murray. Well, this is uh, what's happened with Watt so far today. That's his only tackle. Early in the game, he's going to see a lot of double teams throughout the day. He was held, and now he's delivering a message to Tony Romo. And he took his helmet off to make sure that Romo hurt him. Combine all these numbers, sacks, interceptions, passes, defense since 2012. Watt's the leader in the NFL. Second and three for Dallas, now in Houston territory. Working from the gun. Handoff for Murray. Murray's got a first down. And dishing out a little punishment on the six-yard game. Key block from Martin up front. The yeah. rookie out of Notre Dame. It really looks like the offensive line has uh, got their mojo going here. Three real positive plays to get the ball across midfield. Murray running hard. Martin got away with a hold on J.J. Watt, but a big play by uh, Martin that time. So Murray can pick up the first down. 
We are under three minutes to play now in this first half. No score. Houston and Dallas, two three and one teams going head to head. Harris, the motion man. And it's Murray. Brought down from behind, down low by Muhammad. Four yard gain for Murray. I like that play too that uh, was called by Scott Linehan, offensive uh, quarterback coach. But he's the guy calling the plays, faking the jet sweep to Dwayne Harris. Harris is a dynamite runner. He's got two carries this year for 18 yards. Linehan, third different play caller in as many years for Dallas. And this will be the two-minute warning. Dallas will face a second and six. They are at the 35 of Houston. Texans and the Cowboys, it's the fourth all-time meeting. The state of Texas, football crazy. Dallas held New Orleans scoreless in the first half last week. They've done the same this week against Houston, and now the Cowboys are trying to get on the board. A second and six. Toss it to Beasley. Nice move upfield. Beasley's got a first down. And across the 30-yard line for an eight-yard catch and run. Coming up, Verizon Halftime Report, J.B., Tony, Bart, Puma, Coach Cower, scores and highlights, and a preview of Thursday Night Football on CBS and the NFL Network. Coming up, Verizon Halftime Report. New set of downs for Dallas. We're down to a minute 34 to go. First half, Murray carrying defenders with him. It's a four-yard gain. Swearinger will get credit for the stop for Houston. Yeah, Murray's a tall back, too, at six feet tall. I mean... But he's got such a knack for going low and getting lower than the tackler as he did that time. He just pushed the guy back and picked up good yardage. Both teams have all three timeouts remaining. We've got a minute 10 left to go in the second quarter. Well on to Bryant. Bryant tried to get to the outside, unable to loop there. It's a two-yard pickup. Joseph helping to make sure that he didn't get extra yardage. Timeout taken. We'll step aside with 101 to play, first half. TV's number one comedy is genius. Join Emmy winner Jim Parsons and the rest of the gang on a new Big Bang Theory, new night, tomorrow at 8, 7 Central, only CBS. Previous play before the timeout, DJ Swearinger, important part of the Houston secondary, injured. They're now working on that left elbow. Danielle Manning, the veteran, Checks in to replace Swearinger. They released Shiloh Ko, another safety, earlier this week. Third and four. Just over a minute to go in this first half. Operating out of the gun, Romo will make a change. Turpin uh, and Cushion right in the middle here. Romo swings over the middle. Cole Beasley with a first down grab inside the 15. Eight-yard pickup for Dallas. Kareem Jackson to stop. Now Romo's so experienced, looking off the uh, safeties and finding Beasley. Beasley with two big catches on this drive. And Swearinger is back in for Houston. Movement. Just two penalties against Dallas in this first half. And it looks like this is going to be the third. So Pete Morelli checking first with O'Brien. There's really nothing to check with. If it's against the, the Cowboys, it's before the ball snap. So there is Swearinger returning for Houston. And he's a chatterbox. He's heavily involved. Timeout. Dallas, second team timeout. Okay, we know it's a timeout. There's still a the flag penalty. on the field on and the far side. And we have a full start on the play. Oh, there you go. Number 77, five yards. It's still first down. And now they got to move the ball. This was an issue earlier. Where they neglected to do that, they eventually did. And they'll do the same here. No score, 35 seconds left, first half. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Microsoft Surface.
the official tablet of the NFL. And by Kelly Blue Book. Find out what you should pay for your next new car at KBB.com. Dallas took the timeout to avoid a 10-second runoff, so they have one timeout remaining. 35 seconds left to play in this first half. Rumble in the pocket. Throws. Drop ball by Williams. Joseph complaining there was a push-off from the young wide receiver. No flag on the play. Now this was going to be either at the one-yard line or Williams was going to get into the end zone for a touchdown. Perfectly thrown ball by Tony Romo. And a flat drop by Terrence Williams. Well, it's just a whip right there, right through his hands. So second and 15 now for the Cowboys. Down to 30 seconds to play. Second quarter. Romo trying to get everybody organized. Romo. Underneath to Murray. And he's hit right away. Three-yard pickup, Kareem Jackson there for the Texans. And a good defensive call by Romeo Cornell as the Cowboys are going to use their final timeout. But to go with just a three-man rush, dropping eight, made it tough for Romo down the field. And a reminder, coming up, Verizon Halftime Report. Our crew back in New York, J.B., Tony, Bart, Boomer, Coach Cower. Latest NFL scores and highlights, as well as a preview of Thursday Night Football on CBS and the NFL Network. That's coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report. And we asked the players about playing for Romeo Cornell. Jonathan Joseph said he played for Mike Zimmer. He played for Wade Phillips. And we felt Romeo was kind of a combination of both. You'll get the fiery side occasionally, like Zimmer. And then you'll get some of that mellow attitude like Wade Phillips as well. Well, and the thing about uh, Cornell, you talked about those five Super Bowl rings. I mean, the experience that he has, he's seen every type of offense you can imagine and stopped most of them. So now keep an eye on the clock as well because they have no timeouts remaining. 23 seconds left. If they complete the pass and they're not in the end zone, they're going to have to rush the kicking unit onto the field for a field goal try. Romo steps up. Romo directing traffic. Throws. Incomplete. Terrence Williams got his hands on it, but Andre Howe back there. The rookie makes the play for Houston. A yeah, tremendous play by Howe in the back of the end zone. Williams had a similar catch last week against the Saints, but cutting underneath is Howe. Watch that right hand get on the ball. Ball hits Williams in both gloves. Difficult catch, great coverage by Hal. 33-yard attempt for Dan Bailey. 29 straight field goals for Bailey. And make it 30 in a row. Dallas puts three on the board. 11 seconds left to play, first half in Arlington. 12 plays, 65 yards for the Cowboys. It ends on a Dan Bailey 33-yard field goal. Bailey now kicking it off. Manning, the deep man. This one will roll and then curl towards the sideline. Out of bounds. Houston will have it at the 20-yard line. Last week against Buffalo, first five drives, Houston had... 81 yards, not much better here today. 87 yards, Texans did win the game against the Bills, 23 to 17. Yeah, but it took that 80 yard interception return by J.J. Watt to turn the tide in that one. Also had an interception to clinch it. Darrell Morris with 107 left, picked off E.J. Manuel. So that'll do it for this first half. A 3-0 lead for the Dallas Cowboys. Two teams that are 3-1 leading their respective divisions. And the battle of the Lone Star State has been quiet offensively. As we said it, downstairs to Jenny Dell. Coach, are you surprised that you haven't been able to score any points generating that much offense? It's ridiculous. We need to play better on offense. Our defense is playing well. We just, we, we got to find a way to move the ball. And, we're, you know, we're hurting ourselves with penalties and turnovers. We got to do better than that. Good luck in there. All right, Jenny. Very honest and direct. Bill O'Brien. The Houston Texans trailing the Dallas Cowboys. 3-0. We'll come back to Verizon Halftime Report.
after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Harris loses the football. It will be Texans ball. Getting ready for the start of the third quarter here in Arlington. 3-0 lead for the Cowboys over the Texans. Moments ago, Jenny Dell caught up with Dallas head coach Jason Garrett. Coach, what words did you use to motivate this team at the half? Well, we just have to keep banging away. We've done some good things in all three phases. We've got to take care of the ball better on offense when we get down in that red zone. And it's one play at a time. That's what we got to do. Good luck in the second half. Thanks. All right, back here in the broadcast booth, I and Eagle along with Hall of Famer Dan Fouts. If you're Dallas, yeah, only three points on the board, but can Garrett and the coaching staff feel encouraged that they had long drives and at some point they'll be able to bust through against this Houston D? Yeah, this is a pitcher school, but the pitchers aren't doing it. It's right. the defense that's doing it on both sides. But, yeah, Dallas gets the ball to start the second half. That's huge because they had a lot of momentum at the end of the first half. But the defense of the uh, Texans keeping them out of the end zone, absolutely huge. And that's been a huge key for Houston this season. In the Texans' three wins, they have forced two or more turnovers in each of those games. They've already forced two against Dallas here today. The Cowboys will have the football first. Bullock on the kickoff, and it's over the head of Harris. Cowboys will have it at the 20-yard line. First half numbers, 165 total yards for the Cowboys. Houston held to 86, time of possession in favor of Dallas as well. And they've got a three nothing lead as we start this third quarter. And two takeaways for the Texans has been uh, big for them in the first half as their defense has been tested and they've been up to it. First and 10 Cowboys for Dallas, 20 yard line. Cowboys have it with a first and 10 at the 20. DeMarco Murray brings Crick with him and picks up three and a half yards on the play. Well, for Jason Garrett, last week against New Orleans, exploded in the first half, 290 yards. They had a 24 to nothing lead, ended up winning that game 38 to 17. But there was that period in that game when Drew Brees started to get hot and uh, made a lot of people nervous there as he got the Saints in the end zone a couple of times, but the Cowboys were able to recover. So now a second and seven for Dallas. Romo working out of the gun. Throws to Des Bryant. And Bryant tackled quickly. So it brings up third down now for the Cowboys. I go back to 2009, last time they made the playoffs. Dan, I was just looking through the roster. Not a lot of guys left from that team. You've got Romo, Witten, Spencer, Skandrick, and Free. That's it. Yeah, the turnover, the emphasis on drafting offensive linemen is going to really bode well for the Cowboys. This is a third and three now. Romo swings it to Beasley, and he's right at the marker. Andre Howell riding him towards the sideline. And a three-yard pickup for the Cowboys. Headlinesman Dana McKenzie right on the call here. He's going to say that Beasley was down just as he crosses the 30-yard line. That's going to be good enough for a first down. First down Beasley, a productive slot receiver for this Dallas team out of SMU. He was a high school quarterback. Little Elm, Why Texas. 11 that? first downs now for the Cowboys. Mixing in the run for Murray. Cushion leading that charge for Houston and forces him out of bounds after the gain of five. That's 15 carries now for Murray in the ball game for 62 yards. That one fumble, though, was absolutely critical four times now. But uh, this type of company that he's attempting to keep is awesome. The Hall of Famers there. I talked to Romo about Murray. He said health has really always been the key with him. But pairing him with this offensive line has been the difference. It's the ultimate team sport. And it's paying off for Dallas. Williams. Intended receiver offline. Romo thought he was coming all the way towards the perimeter, and Williams kept going upfield. Those two exchanging some words, making sure that they're together on the game plan. It's not been the uh, best of afternoon so far for Terrence Williams. 
Dropped one ball right at the goal line at the end of the first half and then had one go through his hands in the back of the end zone. So now a third and five. Romo has been effective on third down. It's five of eight. Just underway in the second half. Dallas leading Houston three to nothing. From the gun, pump and throw. Romo, deep ball, too far for Dez Bryant. Stride for stride, Jonathan Joseph with him. And this Dallas drive stalls. Let's check out the battle between Bryant and Jonathan Joseph. Joseph gets away with one there. The officials in the preseason would have had four flags thrown with that little bit of contact. Keyshawn Martin is deep for Houston. Chris Jones will punt it for Dallas. High kick, sailing to the 15. Returnable for Martin. Works the sideline. And comes up just short of the 30-yard line as Jeff Heath makes the play on special teams. 50-yard punt. Houston with a football for the first time in the second half. It was not a half to remember on offense for Houston. Four first downs, they punted four times, four penalties. And they'll try to change their fortune here in the second half. 86 total yards in that first half for the Texans. Arian Foster trying to get him going. Five-yard pickup brought down by Carr. Well, the first team to call themselves the Texans were in 1952, the Dallas Texans. A member of the NFL's National Conference, that team went 1-11. This is video from their lone win. It came against the Chicago Bears. The team folded after just the one year. The Texans were established again in 1960, but it was a different franchise. A member of the American Football League, and three years later, they moved to Kansas City, became the Chiefs under Lamar Hunt. You get it, or are you confused? That's pretty confusing, isn't it? Is there a World Football League team named the Texans, too? Oh, now you're digging deep. Arian Foster spun down by Rolando McClain. That's a two-yard pickup. Now, number 55 is Rolando McClain. Uses his speed there to get by Ben Jones. And then delivers a message to Arian Foster. Really a, a significant third down situation now for the Texans. Third and three for Houston. Fitzpatrick is six of 13 for just 36 yards and a pick. Sets and throws, it's complete to Hopkins. First down for DeAndre Hopkins, not across the 45 yard line. Now the protection is perfect for Fitzpatrick because he can stare down his receiver Hopkins. It's man-to-man -man coverage, so it's okay to stare down your receiver in that type of situation. Look at the offensive line giving him a clean pocket. Nobody within a two yards for that 12-yard gain. Four catches, 26 yards for Hopkins. Give it to Foster. Brought down by his ankles by McLean. McLean first caught Jason Garrett's attention when he did a clinic for Nick Saban. He coached under Saban in Miami for two years. He did a clinic for him at Alabama, and McLean really stood out to Garrett. So he kept an eye on him. He was impressed with him from afar. And then when things went south with Oakland, opportunity came up. He was in Baltimore. They made a deal, and now McLean's a member of the Dallas Cowboys. Second and six. For Houston. 3-0 lead for Dallas. We're down to 9.38 to play in this third quarter. Foster, look at the room. Arian Foster! Big run by Foster. J.J. Wilcox brings him down. It's a 33-yard rip for Foster. Well, the key is the tight end block here by Federowitz. Getting to the edge and letting Foster do the rest. Fedorowicz with a key block there on Justin Durant. All the way to the 15 for Foster. Halftime interview with Jenny Dell. Bill O'Brien not happy with his offensive production. He's the man calling the plays. It's gotten better here in the third. Foster accelerates to the end zone. Touchdown, Texans. He fakes out Barry Church. 
Houston takes the lead here in the third. Well, they're running behind their all-pro left tackle, Dwayne Brown, working with the tight end in unison, Fedorowicz. Jack Crawford pinned to the inside, and there goes Barry Church. Pick up your laundry, Barry, because Foster has taken it all the way. Foster now with 99 yards on the ground, a touchdown on 12 carries. The Texans move down the field with ease against this Dallas D. First possession of the third quarter for Houston as Bullock backs on the extra point. Arian Foster, 59 yards on the drive at Pater in Dallas. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Without a heart, it's just a machine. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by the all-new 2015 Honda Fit, the new Fit is a great fit for you. Arian Foster has given Houston a 7-3 lead against the Dallas Cowboys. 8.49 to play in the third. Randy Bullock kicking it off. Harris, the deep man, is going to take it out. Eight yards deep in the end zone. Bang down as he crossed the 20-yard line. And that's where the Cowboys will open up Tarpini in the special teams tackle. Cowboys now down against Houston. Breast Cancer Awareness Month. This is the sixth year of the campaign. Nearly every item visible on the field will be auctioned off. The NFL donates 100% of the proceeds it receives from the sale of pink merchandise and items. To date, they've raised almost $7 million for the American Cancer Society. Cowboys on offense. Throw it to DeMarco Murray, who picks up five as we send it to Jenny Dell. Well, I am this month means something really special to Brandon Carr. On July 30th of this year, his mother, Kathy, passed away after an eight-year battle with breast cancer. She was just 59 years old. He spent most of training camp by his mother's side and said it really put life into perspective and got him closer with his father, John, who is actually in attendance here today. His father was originally going to leave on Thursday, and he said, you know what, Dad, I need you to be here. So along with the cleats and the gloves and the scarf and everything that he's wearing pink, he also wears a silver bracelet that belonged to his mother, Kathy, on his wrist every day. And he said it brings him closer to her every single day he's here. All right, Jenny, thanks very much. There's a player down for the Houston Texans, and it's Jonathan Joseph, the pro bowler. They will get him upright, working on his back. Andre Howe, the rookie, has already come onto the field to replace Joseph. Yeah, and he's Brian, up on his feet. Brian Cushing came from the inside to uh, hit Murray, and the combination of Murray's body and Cushing's impetus has uh, injured Joseph. And he can jog off the field holding his right side. So Hal getting another opportunity here. We told you about the injuries to Boyer and Morris. That has pushed Hal into extended duty. Second and five for Dallas. We approach eight minutes to go in the third. Murray, the vision. Murray brought down from behind by Swearinger. Four-yard gain, a penalty marker on the play. Thrown at the 30-yard line. Holding. Number 72, offense, 10-yard penalty remains, second down. And that's Travis Frederick, who knows J.J. Watt very well. They played together at Wisconsin. Spent a couple of years together with the Badgers. Yeah, number 72, he's got a pretty good hold on Poe right there. I just wonder how much, uh, how long it'll be before Romo goes after Hal and some of these corners because Green Jackson was injured earlier and safety DJ Swearinger. They're both back in there, but they're not 100%. Right now, Hal is matched up with Terrence Williams on a second and 15 for Dallas. And the rush, Romo. He's got Witten. Rainbow delivery to Witten over the head of Elbert Mack. He drops it in the bucket for 34 yards. Well, Romo saw that Mack had his back to him. 
So that means for Romo, there's no coverage there. As long as the defensive back is running with his back to the quarterback, it's an easy throw. How about this job by Leary keeping Watt at the line of scrimmage? And that's not one of the first round picks. That's a free agent from Memphis, Ronald Leary doing the job. Jason Witten has become the third tight end in NFL history with over 10,000 receiving yards. What a run it's been for Witten now in his 12th year. Give it to Murray. Zigzags his way out across the 45-yard line of Houston. Good block from Leary on that left side. Six-yard pickup for Murray. It's just remarkable to watch the relationship between quarterback and tight end. Romo and Witten, 12 years together now. They have a sixth sense about the passing game. Well, Witten said, yeah. We came in the same year. We literally came in on the same shuttle bus to training camp. 12 years flies by, and there's a bond that's bigger than football, according to Witten. It's a brotherhood. Well, rookies today, they ride in the same limo. Different salary structure. Romo, spin, throw, end zone, caught! Terrence Williams, touchdown Cowboys! Tony Romo! Digging into the bag of tricks, 43 yards. And part of the bag of tricks was just pulling away from the most dominant defensive player in the first quarter of the season. Watch J.J. Watt. He's got a clear shot on Romo. Yeah, I wonder about that left arm, though. It didn't have the strength to wrap up Romo. And how about Romo sticking with the play? Williams hangs with the ball. The defensive back falls down. Kendrick Lewis and Williams makes up for earlier drops with a huge play. The deep ball from Romo is down on the ground. And it raises that right arm in celebration of the touchdown. They victimize Houston on a bomb. 10-7. Dallas. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by all the Old Spice products, which you should use all over your body. And by Universal Pictures' Dracula Untold, in theaters and IMAX Friday. Aerial coverage of today's game is provided by MetLife here in North Texas, AT&T Stadium. Three points scored in the first half. And now in this third quarter, an explosion. Two touchdowns, one from Houston, one from Dallas. Terrence Williams already with five touchdowns this season, matching his total from his rookie year. Second year wide out from Baylor. Big playability, and he comes through for Tony Romo, avoiding the sack of J.J. Watt and keeping the play alive. Eight touchdown passes on the year now for Romo. Five to Williams, three to his other wide out, Des Bryant. Dan Bailey will now kick it off. The Cowboys back in front by three. Danielle Manning, the return man. He'll take a knee, and Texans will have it at the 20-yard line. Now, you just don't see this very often. J.J. Watt getting behind Tyron Smith and whiffing on the tackle of Romo. Romo saw him coming out of the peripheral vision. But now he looks down the field, and he thinks he's got a shot here for Terrence Williams. Williams is going to be picked up by the safety, Kendrick Lewis. But at right about the goal line, watch their feet. A little bit of a trip right there. Lewis bites the dust. And Williams scores. So Houston has the ball with a first and 10 at its own 20-yard line. 6.08 to go in the third. Now trailing by three. Fitzpatrick going to give for Foster. Foster brought down behind the line by Tyrone Crawford. Third year defensive lineman out of Boise State. But you know, I, I know you want to mix up your runs right, left, right, left, whatever, but they've been killing the Cowboys running it left behind Dwayne Brown. They come out on first down, try to run it right, they lose a couple yards. All Foster did on the previous drive was carry five of the six plays for 59 of the 71 total yards. Last meeting against the Dallas Cowboys, Foster went for 106 yards rushing. He's now down to 98 after the loss on first down. Give it to him again. 
Foster, second level. Henry and Foster with a flag down. Working that sideline. Holding. Number 79 offense. 10 yard penalty. And then second down. And it's Brandon Brooks negating an 18 yard run from Foster. Now here's Brandon Brooks right here. They're going to run a draw play to Foster on second down and 12. Watch that right hand go out there, and that's an easy call. Again, it's the officials looking for the point of attack and how the blocking is executed there. And Brooks had to reach out with his right arm and hold Nick Hayden. And now Alfred Blue is in for Foster. Foster on the Houston sideline. 5.05 and counting left in the third. It's now a second and 21. Texans are deep in their own territory. Give it to Blue. Bounces off a of first contact, but then the Cowboys swarm. Justin Durant, part of that group of Dallas defenders, give him a gain of one on the play. Uh, you can almost anticipate that type of call with that type of yardage and the momentum swinging in the favor of the Cowboys after that long touchdown pass. And now the penalty backs the Texans up and they're facing a very difficult third down now. Third and 20 for the Texans. Quick hitter, Johnson. Across the 20, but well short of a first down. Houston will punt it after the 14-yard gain. Henry Melton among those there chasing him down with Barry Church. Uh, hindsight would tell you that would have been a better play on second down than the uh, draw play to Alfred Blue. Andre Johnson now in 11th place all-time passing Hall of Famer Andre Reed. Next up on the list, Randy Moss. Career receptions. Leckler with the boot. Room to work for Harris. Driven down at the 39-yard line by Tarpinian. 50-yard punt. Dallas has the football back with a three-point lead in the third. Today with NFL Now, watch a free preview of the ultimate video highlights experience on your phone, tablet, or desktop. Don't miss a big play from your fantasy team or favorite player. Start watching free today at NFL.com slash now. And a handout, Murray driving up the gut across the 45. Another strong block from Martin. He's been impressive, the rookie out of Notre Dame. Eight-yard gain for Murray. I think Murray heard you say slash now because that's what he did on that play. He's a, a prototypical put your foot in the ground, get downhill quickly. And with good blocks like that for Martin, base, base, easy to base. do. Second and two, Murray, 17 carries, 77 yards. Came into this game on pace to go over 2,100 on the season. Just a quarter and Murray through. Murray! He emerged from what appeared to be a modest game. And Murray able to turn it into a 10-yard pickup. But watch as he hits in here and then will work his way to the outside. It's a draw play with Witten pulling. How about the job that Jason Witten has done this season? Helping Murray get all those yards blocking. DeMarco Murray, most 10 plus yard gains in the NFL this season. Out of the gun, they'll give it to Murray again. Not much there for Murray. One and a half yard gain, NFL Today update. Let's go to JB and Boomer. Tony Gonzalez sang the praises of this guy. He did. Anton Smith doing his best imitation of Lionel Little Train James there, Danny Fouts. He's going to go 74 yards after a missed tackle by Ed Trell. Roll, where are the rest of the Giant defenders? Nowhere to be found. Falcons take a 10-point lead, 20 to 10 over the Giants. Fouts appreciates those dust-offs. Ian and Dan and Jenny. All right, guys, thanks very much. Romo throwing underneath to Des Bryant. He breaks a tackle, and he's out of bounds. Out near the 30-yard line, Jonathan Joseph taking another shot from the physical Des Bryant. That's 11 yards through the air. There's just determination here by both players. Joseph wraps him up. And remember, Des Bryant has about 30 pounds on him. You know, Boomer Sison remembered Little Train James because we played against uh, Boomer's Cincinnati Bengals, and Little Train James 
just killed the Bengals with about 300 yards of total offense and return yardage. I'm waiting for them to mention Rolf Konerska somehow. They're just going with the former Chargers. Louis Coucher. Swearinger reading it perfectly. And like a silo getting down low against Murray. Loss of one. Yeah, the other thing, he hits his legs really hard. And there are very few pads down there. Murray's lucky he had both feet off the ground absorbing that hit, big hit from Swearinger. Second and 11 here for the Cowboys. We're down to 38 seconds to play in the third. Cowboys leading the Texans 10-7. Romo on time for Witten. Brought down to the 20-yard line. Another catch for Witten. That one covers 12 yards. But even more impressive than just the catch is the awareness of where the first down marker is. You see a lot of players make that catch, try to juke a couple of defenders and go around them. Witten split the tacklers and got to the 20-yard line for the first down. Watt is on the sideline once again for Houston. And Witten is now two catches away from 900 for his career. That's the end of the third with the Cowboys in front of the Texans, 10-7. We'll come back to Dallas after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Start of the fourth quarter, a look at the statistical leaders here at AT&T Stadium. Arian Foster with 98 yards on the ground and a touchdown. Murray inching closer to 100. Williams with a big touchdown grab. Johnson has been held in check along with Hopkins for Houston. Dallas on the move once again. Murray goes down quickly. J.J. Watt, the penetration getting to the running back. Well, this time, Justin, Jason Witten can't control J.J. Watt there. Watt obviously playing in some discomfort. Missed a lot of practice time this week with a thigh injury, but still has that quickness. He has been spelled quite a bit today by Romeo Cornell on that play. Lance Dunbar checks in to replace Murray, but he sets up in the slot as a receiver. Second and ten, just underway in the fourth. Ian Eagle, Dan Fouts, Jenny Dell, the rest of our CBS crew. Shotgun, Romo, throws. Intercepted, picked off by Kendrick Lewis. Texans force another turnover. And an empty possession for the Cowboys. A great field position is wasted by the Cowboys after the Watt tackle. Now Romo goes back, misreads the coverage here, does not see Kendrick Lewis. The safety coming from center field to take away that pass to Des, Des Bryant. First pick of the year for Lewis. Great reaction getting the ball at its highest point. Signed as a free agent from Kansas City, Kendrick Lewis steps in front for the pass intended for Des Bryant. And the Texans have it first and ten at their own eight-yard line. Two or more takeaways in all three wins this season for Houston. They've got three takeaways here today against the Cowboys. 10-7, Dallas in front. Up the middle of Foster. Getting forward progress to the 10. That's a two-yard pickup. Justin Durant, first man there for the Cowboys. Right. Arian Foster just looks like a different player than he looked last week when he just had six yards rushing. So far today, he's right at the 100-yard mark, but his explosiveness out of the uh, stance and getting the line of scrimmage quickly has been impressive. We met with Foster yesterday, and for the first time in my 17 years at CBS, in our player meetings, we sat down with a player and his mom, Bernadette Sizemore. On a handoff, it's Foster. Nothing there. He picks up a yard, yard and a half on the play, Tyrone Crawford there defensively and his mom said that Arian was a handful as a kid well he's a, a bit of a contrarian a little bit and uh, we'll challenge you every step of the way but I thought it was more interesting the fact that she knew a little bit about well she got really bad seats she's somewhere in here <laughs> but she had a hamstring injury and she still runs every day and that uh, you know 
Come on, Arian, suck it up. I run, you should be able to run. You don't think it's hereditary, do you? Yeah, no. Could be. Third and six. He's got to get better seats. Fitzpatrick underneath. Grant, can he get to the marker? No. Comes up short, just across the 15. Rolando McLean helped make sure of it. And Houston will punt deep in his own territory. And McLean's had a well of a game. Number 55 in pass coverage. Look how quickly he recognizes the play, closes on Graham, and takes him down by the ankles. Garrett has really been impressed with McLean's instincts and smarts. He picked up the play very quickly. Shane Lechler the punt. Harris back cutting that one nearly hit the big screen. Harris to the outside. Down the sideline. Harris gets brought down from behind with a flag. Alfred Blue, the running back with a special team stop. Well, they may call Blue for a horse collar tackle. I'm not sure I agree with that. Yeah, I think Leckler may have outkicked his coverage here. 53-yard punt, a 39-yard return. It did not look like he grabbed the inside of the shoulder pads. He did hit the face mask, but did not grab it. Officials still having a conference. This was not a horse collar tackle. It looked like a clean tackle by Alfred Blue to me. There's some discussion. This is the hesitation microphone of Morelli. There's no foul on the play for a horse collar tackle. First down. And Dan, your instincts were correct. Well, there's the face mask being hit, but not grabbed. There's the shoulder being grabbed, but not inside the shoulder pad. Good job by the officials getting together and figuring that one out, no matter how long it took. So, Tony Romo and the Cowboys still take over with excellent field position at the Houston 30. Romo just threw an interception. Kendrick Lewis for Houston. But another opportunity for the Cowboys offense leading this game 10-7 with an even 12 minutes to play. Two tight ends in this formation, Witten and Hannah. Witten, the motion man. Running play, Murray. DeMarco Murray. Cutting it to the outside. Murray is hit inside the 15. It's a 17-yard gain. Frederick and Free creating space. Yeah, Free working on J.J. Watt. Little double team there with Martin. And Murray gets to the second level in a hurry. That's a real positive momentum-building play on first down after the good punt return. He is over 100 yards on the day. 22 for 104. Red zone offense, two possessions. They've had to settle for one field goal. Murray, stutter step. Dropped inside the 10. Six-yard pickup for Murray. Justin Tuggle in on that hit. Yeah, curious play selection, but that's what Cowboy fans are used to this year. After the interception, Scott Linehan keeps the ball on the ground. And they feed DeMarco Murray. That hole was so big, I think it surprised Murray at, at first. He kind of hesitated before he hit it. Sets up a second and four here for the Cowboys. Rushing yards are nearly even. Harris goes in motion. Murray. He's inside the five, and it's enough for a first down. Watt and Muhammad collaborate. Well, it's the left side of the line this time with Smith and Leary. Good block by Harris as well. And they're running the ball at J.J. Watt with a double team. Good combination block there between Smith and Witten. Cowboys looking to add to their lead. First and goal for Dallas. Right 
Romo to throw it. Got his man. Back shoulder throw to Bryant for the Cowboys touchdown. Well, how claiming that uh, Bryant pushed off. We'll take a look at it. Not really. He had both hands on him, but he never really extended his arms to where he might draw a flag for the push-off. That was just perfect timing between quarterback and wide receiver. Romo has his second touchdown pass in the second half. Four plays, 30 yards, set up by the 39-yard punt return by Dwayne Harris. And Dan Bailey on for the point after. 17-7. Dallas in front. Des Bryant has got the size, and he certainly had the advantage. Tony Romo knew it all the way. Well, for Houston and Indianapolis since 2002, numbers very much in favor of Indy. That was Peyton Manning who dominated that series for so many years. But Houston won a couple of division titles back to back. And the Colts have been one of the most consistent franchises in the NFL over the last 12 plus seasons. And I hear they're promoting this game as the battle of the quarterback beards. Really? Who's who's doing that exactly? The National Beard Foundation? Well, it was World Beard Day the first September, <laughs> Saturday of every September. But you're the only one that's promoting it as the battle of the beards. Manning comes up short of the 15-yard line. That guy wants in on the beard conversation. Right now, he wants in on a, an accelerated offense for Houston. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Aflac, official partner of the Heisman Trophy. Walmart, save money, live better. And by Ram Trucks, guts, glory, Ram. One hundred ninety fourth consecutive home sellout for the Dallas Cowboys that goes back of course to the old Texas Stadium. They've got a 17 to 7 lead over the Houston Texans with 937 to go in the fourth. And it off to Foster going up the middle Foster takes it to the 25 for a first down. Let's go back to the touchdown. And the question or should say on the non face mask or not. We're going to bring in Mike Carey on this play, our rules expert. Did you agree with that call, Mike? I agree with the call, although it is a horse call if you grab inside the side of the collar. He grabbed the jersey and the shoulder pad, just as Dan said. Dan was right for the first time, and he was right the second time on the OPI also. Also, that's two for two for Dan. Are you scoring analysts back in New York, Mike? Only, only Faust because he never agrees with officials. And, of course, he's going to think there was no offensive pass interference as an old-time quarterback. Yeah, really old-time. I, I played when you were an official. That's how far <laughs> yeah, I right. go back. <laughs> he was an official last year, Dan. Just to confirm the time frame. All right, good stuff, Mike. Thanks very much. Second and five now for Houston. Eight and a half to go in the fourth. Fitzpatrick guns one to Johnson. Catch made and brings it to the 40-yard line. That's an 11-yard pickup. Probably his best pass of the day. A fastball here. Look at his eyes get big. He knows he's got the great Andre Johnson inside against the corner. Coverage by Sterling Moore, but not enough to stop that bullet. Moore seeing extended action. We told you about the Claiborne injury. He's on IR, so it's Moore, Carr, and Skandrick. That quarterback position, certainly when they go to nickel as well. Foster angling outside for three yards. We're down to 7.55 to go in his fourth quarter. A fast-paced Sunday afternoon in Arlington. Dallas leading at 17-7. One thing you haven't seen much out of the offense for the Texans is play-action passing because Foster's running the ball extremely well. They haven't been able to really fake it to him and give Fitzpatrick a little extra time after the fake. Foster has 121 yards and a touchdown on the ground. Once again, this Dallas D has been rock solid. Fitzpatrick spins out of trouble. 
buying some time. Fitzpatrick lets it fly. Connects with Hopkins. Into Dallas territory and inside the 40. Sterling Moore back there. Fitzpatrick able to get away from Tyrone Crawford and turn it into an 18-yard game. Well, he does run a little play action here. Fake to blue. And now he pulls a little Tony Romo with a reverse pivot, keeping his eyes down the field. And Hopkins is wide open at the 40. Fitzpatrick is 5 of 5 in this half. He's 11 of 18 overall for 93 yards. Back to the ground game and Fusker. No gain. Stonewall by Selvi. And coming off is Selvi, five-year veteran who's played with St. Louis, Carolina, and Jacksonville. Well, was a surprise last year when he had seven sacks for Dallas. Jack Crawford third year defensive lineman from Penn State steps in for him second and ten for Houston and you're quite six minutes to play in a ten-point game shotgun Fitzpatrick tosses to the outside and Foster Carr helping out as Wilcox slowed him down and it's a one-yard game yeah with a ten-point deficit here Houston's got to be thinking it, especially Fitzpatrick. Hey, we need a field goal and a touchdown, so it's okay that we don't get a touchdown on this series. But he cannot take the sack here. He's got to pick up at least five yards to get his kicker into field goal range. It would be a 56-yarder from this point. And the clock is rolling. Five and a half to play in the fourth. This is a third and nine for Houston. Fitzpatrick fires to the outside, brought in by Martin, but he is short of the first down. That's a six-yard gain for the Texans. Here's a big decision here for Bill O'Brien. He's going to go for it on fourth down. They one out of two in the early season converting fourth downs. You might want to think of this one over again and go for the field goal. The field goal would be a 51-yarder. But he's got his big guys in there, and Arian Foster in the backfield. Huge play. Fourth down for the Texans. 4.37 to play in the fourth. Fitzpatrick on fourth down. He's got Foster! First down for Houston. Arian Foster dropped inside the 20. Got some separation from the linebacker McLean and turns it into a 16-yard catch and run. Well, really a well-designed play. You can see the man-to-man -man with Rolando McLean on Foster. That's just no contest for Arian Foster. Good tackle by McLean to keep him from going all the way to the end zone. But uh, Fitzpatrick knew where he was going from the pre-snap alignment. So new set of downs for the Texans. Alfred Blue checks in, replacing Foster. And it's a four-yard pickup for Blue, Jeremy Mincy, with a stop for Dallas. 3.50 and counting left in the fourth. Houston has all three timeouts remaining. They'll face a second and six. They're using a lot of clock here. They'll get this play called and out of the huddle. I'm surprised they're not at the line of scrimmage calling plays as they have done so often. Fitzpatrick, 88 of his 115 yards have come in the second half. Play clock down to three. From the gun, Fitzpatrick. Scrambling. And takes a hit near the 10. He'll get a gain of a yard. Anthony Hitchens shifting over for Dallas. Foster will return. We will go under three minutes now. And at some point, if they don't pick up the first down here, obviously they're going to have to kick the field goal. I doubt that they would go for it again on fourth down. That was a big gamble that was paid off by Foster beating McLean. We're down to 240 remaining here in the fourth. Time-consuming drive for the Texans. Fitzpatrick hit as he throws. Incomplete and almost intercepted by Hitchens. Now the field goal unit will come on. 
A uh, real good pressure by the front four of the Cowboys. Mincy gets in there, and that was enough to uh, nearly pants Ryan Fitzpatrick. First incomplete pass of the second half for Fitzpatrick. Didn't have a great grip of it. And it's a 29-yard field goal attempt for Randy Bullock. He knocks it through to cut the Dallas lead to seven. We've got 2.27 remaining in the fourth. Week five continues later today on CBS and for some of you on Fox. Then tonight, Sunday Night Football on NBC. And tune in tomorrow, Monday Night Football on ESPN. Houston will kick it off. Do you even think about an onside kick here when you have three timeouts remaining? That's the key, the three timeouts. Uh, that, uh, that was a long drive, went a long way to long time off the clock, but they did save their three timeouts. That drive took seven minutes and 16 seconds. Dallas was prepared in case Houston thought about an onside kick. So it'll come out to the 20-yard line. Tony Romo and the Cowboys offense trying to ice this one against the Texans. Coming up tomorrow on NCIS, Los Angeles, LL Cool J and Chris O'Donnell star in a new episode you won't want to miss. NCIS, Los Angeles on its new night and time, tomorrow at 10, 9 central, only CBS. Ryan Fitzpatrick just hoping for another opportunity. But right now it's on the Houston defense. Dallas has a 17 to 10 lead with 2.27 to go. Houston has all three timeouts remaining as the Cowboys take over a first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Double tight end set for Witten and Hannah. And a give to Murray. A pick up a half a yard on the play. Timeout called. 2.23 to play. We're in the fourth in a seven-point game. So the situation here at AT&T Stadium, the Dallas Cowboys 17, the Texans 10. Houston has two timeouts remaining. Dallas faces a second and nine from its own 21-yard line. Romo out of the gun. Delay of game. Delay of game. Unbelievable. Five-yard penalty remains. After a timeout. I mean, that is, is critical because the Texans can, will have three ways to stop the clock now. On the second and, uh, what's that, 15? And it also 14. forces you into a passing situation if you're looking to get a first down, obviously, and that would stop the clock on an incomplete ball. Uh, it would be wise to throw a screen or just a draw play to Murray at this point. So second and long now for Dallas after the delay of game. With the handoff, there is the wide receiver screen for Harris. And Dwayne Harris able to work his way upfield. Good block by Des Bryant. And eventually brought down on the play by Merciless. Yeah, let's go back and look at the Des Bryant touchdown here. And watch the veteran quarterback, Tony Romo, see that this is a rookie out here. Andre Howell on Des Bryant. That is a gimme. Kareem Jackson out of the lineup, and Hal claiming he was pushed off. Romo recognizing the personnel on the field, the single coverage on his best receiver. Easy score. And now a third and six. This Houston defense, which has been excellent on the young season, number seven in the NFL and points allowed, 16.8. That's basically what they've given up here against a high-powered offense, the Dallas Cowboys. Texans need a stop. Dallas, 55% on third down conversion. That's time for second in the NFL. And they're six out of 11 today. Critical. Beasley in motion. And a third and six for the Cowboys. Romo throws it off his back foot and nobody there. Getting rid of it. So Houston able to maintain one timeout. They still have the two minute warning. Pressure from Reed and Lewis on the play. And now Ryan Fitzpatrick getting ready 
to bring his offense onto the field and try to rally on the road. Now, Kareem Jackson was in on that play. He had Beasley in the slot. Jonathan Joseph had the man-to-man -man coverage on Bryant on the outside. Perfect coverage, and now a penalty flag. Intentional grounding against Tony Romo. He was in the pocket when he threw that ball away, and there was no receiver anywhere near it. Loss of down and loss of yardage here. A really poor sequence for this Dallas offense. Well, they had a delay of game coming out of a timeout. Pressure by Kendrick Lewis, and Romo just bails out and draws the flag after a conference of the officials. So Chris Jones will punt it out of his own end zone with 2.10 left on the clock. Romo on the day, 22 of 33, 237 yards, two touchdowns and an interception. Keyshawn Martin is waiting for it at the Houston 39. Martin in his third year. Fourth round pick out of Michigan State. Jones with the punt. Martin moves forward. Brings him cleanly at the 41. Works his way to Dallas territory. And angles out of bounds. We hit the two-minute warning after the 45-yard punt. 14-yard return. The Texans have a short field to work with. They're down by seven in the Battle of Texas from Arlington. Coming up next, the NFL on CBS rolls on when the Chiefs face the 49ers or the Jets take on the Chargers. Check your local listings. Second half of our doubleheader, the NFL on CBS. 1.59 to play. The Cowboys had the ball for 29 seconds on that last drive. And now the Texans take over, down by seven, with a first and ten at the Cowboys, 45. Fitzpatrick, throw it underneath to Andre Johnson. Johnson has got some running room. Johnson sprints to the 25. Good block from Garrett Graham. Springs Johnson for 20 yards on the catch and run. And he missed practice time with a bad left ankle. Nothing wrong with the ankle on this play. Good decision and good play selection by Bill O'Brien. We're down to a minute 36 to play. Houston does have one timeout remaining. Five catches for Johnson. 58 yards. Out of the gun, Fitzpatrick. Texans down seven. Fitzpatrick. He's got Hopkins. Brought down just short of the five by Brandon Carr. Bang, bang. Houston down the field on two plays, and that one covers 19. You know, we've been talking about the Dallas offensive line. Well, the Texans offensive line has protected Fitzpatrick well today. Zero sacks for the Cowboys on Fitzpatrick. First and goal from the six. The handoff. Foster bangs his way inside the one. You know that old thing about scoring too quickly? I think it's a bunch of hogwash. You just want to score. Tie this one up. Second and goal. Hand it off. It's Foster slicing in. Touchdown, Texans. I'd be surprised if uh, Bill O'Brien goes for two here. You want to tie this one up. You've got the momentum right now. That was a four-play, 45-yard drive. Fitzpatrick with a couple of strikes, and then Foster pays it off going over the right side. But the Cowboys have just faded here in the last two minutes. A namaste for Arian Foster. And frustration for Jason Garrett and the Cowboys. You could not have scripted that any better for Houston. What they did defensively against Dallas, the miscues by the Cowboys on offense, and then they back it up by moving right down the field to tie this game up after the Bullock extra point. Jerry Jones' team now finds itself in a tense situation, tied at 17 apiece with 41 seconds left. 41 seconds and three timeouts. You know, a lot depends on if you get a good kickoff return here. But there's plenty of time for Romo because of those three timeouts. And the fact, when you think about the personnel he has, the weapons he has in the passing game with Bryant and Williams and, of course, Witten down the middle, a lot of options for Romo. But right now, the uh, momentum is in the dark blue. It's a deep steel blue, Dan, if you're going to be specific with the colors. 
It's not dark blue? I believe Deep Steel. Deep Steel. Sounds like a uh, World Wrestling <laughs> Federation. No, that was uh, that was in that movie, uh, Zoolander. Oh, yeah. Is that where they got it? Deep Steel Blue. Deep Steel. Huh? It's, it's the Zoolander look. That's a look you give me a lot. And you take it. <laughs> you the man. 41 seconds left in this fourth quarter, and Houston has rallied to tie this one up at 17 apiece. Randy Bullock will kick it off. Dwayne Harris waits for it. He's the deep man for the Cowboys. All tied up in big deep. Harris will take it out. Harris looking for blockers. And Harris comes up short of the 20-yard line. Justin Tuggle on special teams. Now you start thinking about uh, Dan Bailey's range. Career long this year, or career long is 53, as long this year, just 51. He has hit 30 in a row. Now Romo has had a knack throughout his career. Dan Bailey has been so consistent and reliable for this Cowboys team. 30 straight field goals made by Bailey. That's the longest active streak in the league. Can they get him into range? 36 seconds left. Knotted up at 17 apiece. Shotgun for Romo. Romo throws it underneath. Murray with a catch and now will duck out of bounds. So they pick up eight yards on first down. Yeah, that's where returning that kickoff out of the end zone really hurts you because you you don't get the ball out to the 20 and you waste time off the clock. So give the offense that time back. Just take the ball at the 20. Don't return that kickoff. Second and two now for the Cowboys. Romo making a change. We've got time to work with on the play clock. It's down to seven. Trying to make sure Murray knows the play. Rush coming. Romo steps up. A little dart to Murray. Murray makes a beeline to the perimeter. And he's out of bounds across the 40-yard line. That's 16 yards for the Cowboys. Yeah, another 20 yards or so, and they've got a shot at a, a real long field goal. 25 yards puts uh, Bailey in his range. 23 seconds left. Back. Back Elvis. Oh. That's two plays. The Texans have only rushed four players at Romo. He's had plenty of time. Just across the 40-yard line, first down for Dallas. Working underneath again, and a drop ball by Bryant. Incomplete. Well, they had something going there, too, if this ball is caught by Bryant. The uh, Texans were rushing five that time. Bryant has blockers out in front, but that ball was thrown high, and that uh, makes it difficult for Bryant not only to catch the ball, but get going after he comes back down to the earth. Both teams, three and one, considered surprises in the early portion of the season. Houston has battled back. Dallas trying to get it done with a last second finish. Romo avoids the pressure, throws, and there's room for Murray into Houston territory, and he's dropped at the 45. 12 seconds left on the clock, 15 yards on the pass play and a timeout called by the Cowboys. Three straight completions to DeMarco Murray. And the Cowboys are in business now. Still have two timeouts so they can use the entire field. But the uh, Texans more concerned with the wide receivers, Williams and Bryan and the tight end Witten. Ten more yards for Romo and the Cowboys. That would make it a 53-yard field goal for Bailey, and that's his career long. But perfect kicking to conditions inside this uh, beautiful stadium. 12 seconds left. From the 45 of Houston. He 
could have time for two quick plays and a field goal try, depending upon play selection. Romo from the gun. Romo gets rid of it. He's got Des Bryant, and Bryant brought down inside the 40 by Joseph. Seven seconds left after the eight-yard gain, and a timeout called by the Cowboys. Wait, they're just giving uh, the Cowboys receivers Bryant that time, and DeMarco Murray before. Just way too much room. Look how far off Jonathan Joseph is playing. Easy reception, and now Bryant, after the catch, picks up about three more yards. Right now, they're looking at a 55-yard field goal attempt for Dan Bailey. There's seven seconds left on the clock. They have time to run one play on the ground to the middle of the field, pick up a couple yards and get them just a little bit closer because they have that timeout to use. The important thing, though, for Murray is to realize that you only have three or four seconds. So once you get what you can get, get down. Don't try to get to the end zone. Seven seconds remaining. Second down for the Cowboys. Looking for some yardage before they bring Dan Bailey onto the field for a game-winning field goal attempt. It will be a running play. It's Murray up the gut. And a few seconds come off the clock. Three seconds remain. Takes it to the 35, and now it will be Bailey with a chance to win it. It'll be about a 53-yarder. And that's been the goal the whole time is to get him within his range. You know, this natural rivalry, huge in Texas. It's too bad the NFL can't figure a way to make this a seasonal thing like they could do with so many of the natural rivalries in the NFL. I know they have their system. Houston does have a timeout remaining. We'll see if Bill O'Brien chooses to ice Dan Bailey. I think Dan's icing himself right now. He's about 20 yards behind everybody, just getting loose, concentrating, focusing, all those things. And I'm sure O'Brien, standing right next to the official, is going to call a timeout. There it is. Timeout is called. So Bailey will have to think about it a little longer. That's the final timeout for the Texans. Now you always want to try to get into a kicker's head. I know Bailey's on a, a heck of a streak here, having hit 30 in a row. But he's definitely thinking about it. He knows it's a long kick. And remember, the guy that's going to be rushing right up the middle trying to block this kick is J.J. Watt. And Watt has already blocked an extra point this season. Long kick like this, you got to drive it. You can't get as much height under it as you might like. Distance important here. Dallas looking to improve to 4-1 and one on the season. They will be at Seattle next. And then home for the Giants. The Texans will have a quick turnaround hosting Indianapolis on Thursday night. A game we'll have for you here on CBS. So here we go. 53-yard attack. L.P. Lodisar will snap it. Jones, the punter, will hold it. For the win, Dan Bailey from 53 yards, and it is offline. Overtime in Dallas. They had plenty of leg, but the icing perhaps paid off for Houston. Danny has made 30 in a row. Well, until that kick. The odds were in the Texans' favor then. That's a remarkable run. This tested his distance. He had it, but he just pulled it a little bit left. It was all set up for Jason Garrett and the Cowboys to walk out of here with a win. And instead, overtime. Unless the team receiving the snap is in the open game.
Seahawks scores the touchdown. Each team will have two, re two timeouts, and all replay will be done from the replay board. This is tails. This is heads. What are you going to call? Tails. 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 Move around. Tails is the call. Tails it is. You want to receive. Houston will receive it this year. Houston wins the toss. They'll have the football when we come back. It's overtime in the Battle of the Lone Star State. Overtime rules, one 15-minute quarter, a touchdown or a safety on the first possession wins the game. Not a field goal if the score is tied after each team's first possession. The next score will win the game, two timeouts per team. No coaches' challenges, only booth reviews from here on out. Houston has won the toss. They will receive to start overtime. When you watch the body language of Dan Bailey, he comes out to kick this one off, and he is uh, as upset as he possibly could be in missing that potential game winner. In his fourth year in the NFL, he has did everything that Dallas could hope for. They signed him to a seven-year, $22.5 million deal. They got a chance to end it, could not at the end of regulation. So it's OT. Bailey bangs it through the back of the end zone. Dallas and Houston tied at 17 apiece. Ian Eagle, Dan Fouts, Jenny Dell, the rest of our NFL on CBS crew, producer Mark Wolf, director Bob Fishman. Sold out at AT&T Stadium. A 3-0 lead for the Cowboys at the end of the first half. And then we saw some offense. We saw some scoring in that third quarter. But Dallas still had a chance to seal the win if they could get a few first downs up by seven. They could not. It was a quick possession. Houston took over. They scored a quick touchdown. Hand up. Arian Foster. Foster brought down across the 40. He's got two rushing touchdowns on the day. Dwayne Brown and Ben Jones. It's that left side again. 151 yards for Foster. And it's straight at the Cowboys. There's nothing tricky about this. It's not a wide play. It's one cut and go. Just shy of the 45. Houston on the move. It's Foster. Up the middle. Brought down by Church. But it, now Foster is gashing this Dallas defense on the ground. Well, they got back to what they've done so well in the past, and that's a zone running scheme. First play to the right side, a big game. Second play to the left side, exactly the same play just flipping it over and they right to midfield in two plays. And for Rod Marinelli's defense, which has been solid throughout the season, to give up that quick drive at the end of regulation towards the end for the touchdown. And now to start out overtime, Houston is having its way with the Dallas D. Now from Blue is in. Blue works off tackle for two. Selvi and Crawford combined to bring him down. Just four of 12 converting third downs for the Texans today. They've been pretty good throughout the uh, season at 41%. This will be a, an interesting play selection for Bill O'Brien if he doesn't make the first down. Will Romo get a chance? Touchdown wins the game for Houston. It's a third and two. Foster sets up as a receiver. Working from the gun, Fitzpatrick. Looks, throws, sideline, incomplete. The Dallas defense holds up. And Justin Durant did a great job. Fitzpatrick hanging in there and gets drilled by Mincy. Good clean hit by Mincy. But uh, Foster could not shake Durant on the wheel route to the outside. Punt from Wetner. Harris waiting for it. The flag is thrown. It bounces in the air. Actually takes a Cowboys bounce. And it's touched at the 20-yard line. The penalty marker is down to the 16. 28-yard punt. And you would anticipate this being against the Cowboys. Some type of illegal block. This will back them up inside the 10. During the kick, holding number 37, receiving team. 10-yard penalty, first down. And it's C.J. Spillman called on the hold. 
Gilman had a similar penalty to start the ball game in the first quarter on a punt return. So, Tony Romo and the Dallas Cowboys offense with a chance to win. And you know, at this stage of the game, when you're in overtime, you're tied, you can go back to your original game plan, the things you thought coming into the game were going to be successful. You combine that then with the adjustments you made at halftime where all of a sudden you started moving the ball offensively. Just pick and choose now what you think is going to be successful. First and ten for the Cowboys, just shy of the 10-yard line. Delayed handoff, it's Murray. Five-yard pickup for Murray to the 15. Pickett and Swearinger in on the stop. And the thing that people got to re remember is you've got all the time in the world here. You've got 12.40, 12.30 to go in the uh, overtime. So there's no hurry. You can be patient and be sure of what the play call is. Three receivers set, nickel package for Houston. From the gun, Romo to the outside after the catch. Des Bryant trying to curl around the defender. He actually had the first down, yep. but because of that adjustment, they're going to mark him behind the marker. Yeah, well, he gave it up, trying to make a bigger play. The important thing is he doesn't show patience here. If he just catches the ball and sits down, he has the first down. So instead, it's a third and one for the Cowboys. They're under 12 minutes to play in overtime, tied at 17. Jonathan Joseph comes out, Green Jackson replaces him. Extra offensive lineman here for Dallas. Jeremy Parnell. Oh, he picked the right hole. Murray! So tough to bring down. You can't arm tackle him. He's six foot, 217 pounds, and he's a rock. 11 yards and a new set of downs for the yeah, Cowboys. Yeah, great block there by Free. But how about Murray? You know, a lot of running backs will get to the line of scrimmage, close their eyes, and anticipate a hit. Kept his eyes open, bounces off, and picks up a huge first down for the Cowboys. 134 yards on 28 carries for DeMarco Murray, the NFL's leading rusher. Shotgun here for Romo. Next score wins the game. Romo trying to put an end to it. And a slotting attempt by Witten. Incomplete. Now well, the pressure got to Romo that time. Five-man rush for the Texans, and that uh, sped the clock up there for Tony Romo. He had Witten, but the pressure was getting to him. That forced the bad throw. Four hundred seventeen yards of offense for Jason Garrett's team. You want to be a head coach in the NFL? There's going to be some emotions involved. Yeah, it's in his bloodline, isn't it? Dad, a longtime football coach, Jim Garrett. In fact, Jim Garrett was the coach of the Houston Texans in the WFL 1974. Jason's dad. Timeout called. So this, this isn't the first Texan team you're saying. Then. We had the <laughs> WFL, yeah. uh, NFL, and, and the AFL. Yeah. They've gotten around, the Texans. Well, it's a catchy name. And then, But, you know, using that timeout, they only have two to work with in overtime. That's huge. And that, that may be the reason we saw that expression on Jason Garrett's face. Scott Linehan just gave some instructions to Tony Romo. We've got 10.49 to play in OT. And a second and 10 for the Cowboys. Two star running backs have done their respective jobs today. Arian Foster, 157 yards, two touchdowns. Murray has gone for 134. Murray picks up a yard. J.J. Watt and Ryan Pickett there defensively for Houston. The Cowboys have, have had good success converting third downs today. Seven of 13. But this is a third down and nine. And those are tough ones. Scott Linehan calling the plays for this Cowboys offense. 
Next score wins. Cowboys facing a third and long. Romo. Floats one up in the air. Juggle. Des Bryant. Oh, spectacular grab by Bryant. One on one. Bryant wins the matchup. Well, he caught it twice. The ball is going to go off his hands there. And as he's falling, he reaches over the top of Joseph Helmet to pull it in. What concentration. Joseph played it perfectly. He split the hands of Bryant, but couldn't keep Bryant from grabbing the ball right off the top of his hat. And Dan, they are now in field goal range after that long completion to the Pro Bowler. Des Bryant, concentration and physical skills. On a give, Murray. He's dropped. Bryant pushing there. Line of scrimmage will be just shy of the 30. That's 137 yards rushing for Murray. 30 carries. You know, you go back to that play. It was a out, all and out blitz by the Texans. They brought the uh, safety, Swearingen, and Cushing. And uh, Romo saw it. And he knew he had man-to-man -man coverage on the outside with one of the most dynamic wide receivers in the game. He gave him a shot and Bryant paid it off. Right now it would be a 48-yard field goal attempt for Bailey who missed a 53-yarder at the end of regulation that could have ended it and would have ended it for Dallas. Give it to Murray, stiff arm, nothing there, no gain. And they're going to send Bailey onto the field now. Now, Houston does have two timeouts. So Bill O'Brien icing o Bailey earlier. He may think about doing it one more time. Depending on the spot here, it's 48 or 49 yards, and it's going to be a 49-yard attempt. For the win. Redemption for Bailey. Yes! He knocks it through. The Cowboys win in overtime. 20 to 17 over the Texans. Bragging rights belong to Dallas. Perfect snap. The hold. Right down the middle. What a job by the Cowboys bouncing back after Houston grabbed all the momentum. But to have the awareness and leadership of a quarterback like Tony Romo, knowing what his weapons are, getting a big play from a guy that makes big plays for you, Des Bryant. And it's Dan Bailey converting from 49 yards away for Bill O'Brien. Heartache, his team fought and battled at the end of regulation to tie the game up. Dallas had an opportunity to win it in regulation, but it's the Cowboys, a winner 20-17 in overtime.